there's a burgeoning debate on the right here in the States about kind of this same issue. Um, it's come up in the context of Israel where some of the more isolationists are saying, eh, sorry, this happened to you, but eh, we're kind of out. We got our own problems to worry about, a lot of them, and we can't really help you that much. And we actually kind of don't want to get involved in this nightmare morass that's over there. So good luck to you, but we're out. And that's spun into like an interfaith battle where some are saying affirmatively to Jewish people, Christ is king, which like the Muslims, Jewish people do not believe, right? They think Jesus was just a man, wasn't, wasn't Christ. And Jews feeling like, whoa, whoa, you know, like, okay, you have your belief, we have ours. But why is that coming in to contest support for Israel in this attack that was launched on them? And I'm seeing it divide people I really like and respect and, you know, have a lot of fondness for on both sides of this intra-GOP battle. So how, how do you guys, you must've heard about this. What, what do you make of it? Well, it, 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 Coleman Hughes was uh, on Joe Rogan and he was really good and he's a yeah, really he's great. wonderful thinker. And he made that point, which is like, why are we picking at Israel for the civilian to uh, military or to terrorist uh, kill ratio where we don't do that in Ukraine and we don't do that anywhere else. So for me, I I think that it, it, it smacks of a, a of a double standard in the way that we look at the, the at the Jewish people. And also, I've just got this really old-fashioned view of the world, which is that there are not that many Jewish people on this planet. They've done a great deal of good, and they are under threat. Whenever something bad starts happening in society, it's the Jews that get it first. So I feel that we have a moral responsibility to look after what is a genuinely oppressed minority. Now, they are a very well-armed, genuinely oppressed minority. But, you know, Calvin made a point earlier before we were talking, sorry, it's a sort of slight segue, we were talking about the Rihanna nun thing, you know, the, this constant winding up of Christians that is going on. And he said that if you look at the designer, the photographer, who else? And the producer, I think. And the yeah. producer, they were all Jewish people. So there is... She was, she was a, on a, uh, Interview Magazine in and in a, I'll show it, in a, in a, she had dressed like a nun, like a s sexy nun, yeah. <laughs> which, which is... Newsflash, I mean, not a thing, face Rihanna. It. Yeah, you can see a boob. Well, yeah, it's just mockery of the faith, isn't it? It kind of is a thing. Sorry to say so. What? I'm sorry, Father. It's sorry, like a, what, sexy that's like a Come on, naughty Megan. Halloween thing. I mean, you can do naughty anything at Halloween, but no, that's... What naughty nuns are there? I don't know. I think I think there are there are... It, it is a, it is a, a, a it's, trope. It's a clear mockery of the faith. And I, I, for me... I get the America first thing. I really do. I think our British politicians should be Britain first. But then after that, the consideration is wider. And what we're seeing is the Islamic faith is actually anti-Western, anti-Christian. You know, it's anti-women, anti-homosexual, anti-everything, but in a very harmful way, as in, you know, let's make sure that women cover their entire bodies except for their eyes and let's not let them drive and let's stone homosexuals to death, if not push them off roofs. Like it's very against our way of life. But people would rather side with that because they hate the Jews so much. They would rather side with a terrorist organization such as Hamas than, than say anything that's remotely pro-Israel because they don't want to be seen as a Zionist. They, they hate the Jewish people with a passion. And I'm seeing that on the left, but also on the right. And I think Megan's right that it's becoming so divisive. And I think it's by design. We, we saw this over here with Brexit. We saw it with COVID lockdowns, with the vaccines, with the Ukraine and Russia, and now with Israel and Palestine. This seems to be, over the last five to 10 years, a big issue every few months that is purposefully set to divide and conquer the, the public, the general populace. So we're all fighting amongst ourselves. But in terms of the right, so in yeah. terms of people that are sort of centre-right leaning, yeah. what about uh, why... Why would they suddenly now turn on Israel? Because it's like Tucker's doing it a little bit today. I mean, he's being accused of doing it. I don't think that's what he's doing. I think he's just trying to offer an alternate perspective. But why is, because it is true, Megan's right, we have had in our life, in this most recent iteration of the catastrophe that is the ongoing clown world, this sudden separation and people are flying off to criticize Israel. Yeah. For for what I can see is no reason. Thirteen hundred people were massacred. It's like you started it, mate. We have to get rid of you. 
that's what and, and and to add what? to that, there's a fair amount, you know, using the Christ is King, you know, slogan saying in justification of their actions, which uh, to me, I've never seen this in my lifetime. I'm 53 years old. I've never seen like Christians kind of throwing down against Jews as you're non-believers. You're only going to get so much of our support. You know, we don't see you as an ally because of the whole was he Christ or just a man thing? This is new to me. What do you make of it, Father? I mean, this is like your business. Yeah, I think I've got some some nuance in that because I think Christ is King, and I don't think we should ever be ashamed Same. of saying that. And I, I think what we what, what I worry about now is that that's being painted as an anti-Semitic slur, and then people are being discouraged from saying it. So there's an element of anti-Christian sentiment being brought about by this movement as well. And I think that's partly from the hard left who don't want us proclaiming that Christ is king. So we should always be proclaiming that. But of course, we're never doing it to antagonize anyone or to, to be anti-Semitic, and that's when the problem comes in. So we've got to, we've got to always keep that in mind. It's yeah. morphed I, into I mean, like a, uh, you know, I said this the other day, but like, giants suck! You know, like it's, it's morphed into sort of a team, you know, if you say it aggressively to a Muslim or to a Jew, it has a different meaning than if you're at Sunday mass, you know, saying it out loud. And I don't know, I just, I feel uncomfortable with the whole thing. You can absolutely say they lost me. They went too far. There are too many civilians dead. And I did want a more proportionate response. And I don't like Netanyahu and America's got other problems. All that is totally within the fair lane of criticism and all that. But when you cross over to like the Jews, the Jews are the problem, the damn Jews, like we're hearing more and more of that. It's kind of scaring me. Well, there are a lot of old conspiracies. I think we've had so many years of not trusting the elites because we've seen them light our face so many times. Again, COVID's a great example of that with the lockdown of the vaccines, the mandates and all of that, that we don't trust anybody anymore. So we're latching on to every conspiracy as if it's true. But do you think there's also an, an element of the fact as there must have been during, you know, in the build-up to Second World War where the Jews were blamed for everything, but it was actually the reparations plan put in place by America. Sorry, America. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure how much the UK played, you know, impoverished Germany. And what Hitler did was he used the impoverishment of Germany to blame the Jews, whereas, so he sort of ignored the elephant in the room. Whereas what's happening now is we know that this culture, Britain, and America has seen uncontrolled and unfettered immigration under Biden to the tunes of tens of millions, yeah. as far as I can gather, that people are in search of their identity look for somebody to blame, but they ignore the elephant in the room, which is their culture is changing drastically. So they just think the Jews are an easy target, so let's attack the Jews. But for the for, for the thought of Jewish school children in London to not be able to wear a Star of David, which is the irony and the, and the, the nihilistic irony behind that is beyond. And for Jewish people to be frightened to live in this capital city and for for that to exist in 2024 mm -hmm. to me is so much more powerful yeah. and important and real because it's actually real than any sort of weird blown up version of what we're calling Islamophobia as our streets are completely yeah. controlled and dominated every single weekend by people calling for the genocide massacre of Jewish people. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10,000 or 10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, they can help you. Even if you have the means to pay, or if you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.